This week's episode is sponsored by Ryan at Change. If you are looking to get involved in e-commerce and build a successful online business, then check out my good friend Ryan, who I have been working with the last few years and attended many events and retreats all around the world, spending time with members who are making some serious money. I have been promoting Ryan for a while now because I believe in what he does and not only has he helped and supported me build my own businesses, but I have seen firsthand how he helps and supports his members take their businesses to new levels and give them financial freedom. So if you are interested in getting into e-commerce and building successful online stores, then message Ryan on his Instagram at RyanJB to join his winning team. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. And boom, we're on. And today's guest, we've got Dot. How are you, bro? I'm good, thank you very much, sir. I'm I've good. seen you everywhere, bro. Yeah. Do you know what I have to ask you before we start? Yeah, of course. See, when you first, first start, yeah. what do you say? Boom, we are on. Do you know I'm sitting there for every time I watch an episode up? What does he say? <laughs> I had to ask you, sir. Yeah. Before we... yeah. No, because people are always in the boom, we're on. Yeah. And they're always saying the wrong thing. I don't know if they're taking the piss, but... Yeah, boom, we are on. Right, okay. Yeah. I've got I think it. that's the first time I've ever said it in slow motion. <laughs> yeah, you get so I just get so used to it. It's just ended up a thing. Right. Yeah, fuck it, boom, we're on. That's me just kind of switching on. It's like right. everything else stops. Ready. I'm involved in the guest. But yeah, listen, you're smashing it. You're everywhere. You've went viral. And it's a, uh, listen, it's a good thing to see. You're trying your hardest to then make something of your life. Right. Turn red has went massive. Everybody's clipping it up and yeah. it's went mega. Yeah. But how's life, bro, first of all? Life's good, man. Yeah. I mean, you know, the music industry is up and down anyway. So I think I think I'm at an age where I kind of understand everything, even not even though there's still up and downs in it, but I'm good. I can't complain, you know, people work their whole life trying to get a song that even reaches that, that far. You know, obviously we want more, but I'm really blessed and yeah. thankful to, to, to get the opportunity. That How I old are you? I'm 38. I'm 39, bro. Yeah. 40, oh no 40 next week I'm 39 when you... I turned 39 last week <laughs> happy birthday yeah I'm 40 next week yeah I've lied about my age for years mate but I feel as if it's time I feel mature now I can own it yeah listen I'm I don't know if it's half time I don't know what's happening but it makes me quit I always question life anyway I'm a big thinker and yeah. I question it even more is this the second half of my life should I be doing more it goes that fast. I mean, you're yeah. younger, people say it goes by. Yeah. In a blink of an eye, and you think, shut up, you old mug. I mean, and then it's, bang. It's, 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 it's a good question to ask yourself. I mean, I, 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 I think it's kind of like the second half. Hmm. Yeah, we would like to think so anyway. So we've got to make it special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But before we get into everything, I always like to go yeah. back to the start of my guests. Get more of an understanding of you, who you are, and what you're about. So go right back where you grew up and how it all began. Okay. Um, goes right back to a little council estate in the Isle of Sheppey in Kent uh, called Queensway. And uh, that, yeah, that, that was my beginning, man. That was the first, you know, 10 to 12, 10 to 14 years I was there. Uh, council state life. I know everyone says the same thing, uh, but it, I, I, I liked it. <laughs> you know, I, I liked it. I, I know I've lived out of a council estate and then I, I was, it was great, man. It was great. That, that was the first part of my life, like ten to like we we're saying up to up to like ten was like really nice, man. Parents were together. We lived in a bit of a little bit of a rough area, but it was just like all normal and just good fun, running around, doing what you want. Yeah, it was how, cool. How was school? School was all right uh, up until sort of like them ages there, ten, eleven. 
uh, when I started to go into like secondary school where I, it was quite like visible that I was different because my name was Moses. I was in a predominantly white school. I had big Afro hair. You can see my hair, but my hair is like, it just, it just goes Afro. And it was I had like this big Afro hair. My name was Moses. You know, I listened to a lot of rap music and people didn't really listen to rap music back then in them times. And uh, yeah, I got, a, there was a little bit of bullying. Not, it wasn't like a loads. It was only for like a few years until I kind of got myself together, found myself or whatever. Um, Mum and dad split up the same sort of time, uh, which was a bit, it was a bit shit. Yeah, it was a rough household, man. Was that? Yeah. Uh, dad left. My older brother was on heroin. My mum was on drugs. Uh, not hard drugs like uh, heroin or nothing like that, but she was like amphetamines and stuff like that. So it was a rough little uh, time period. Um, ended up getting stabbed by my brother. And that's where it kind of like the whole craziness kind of stopped there. And it was like, right, I went to stay with my dad, stayed, spent some time in London. And, uh, but we was all good, you know, family's all good. It was just like, it's like cancer estate. It's like, I obviously I'd say not normal, but it's just normal stuff, fighting and, and whatnot. And yeah. it, it was like that. Why did your brother stab you? Just, just in a, in a, in a fight. Just, we was mad. We was mad, man. We was like the worst. Like when we'd start fighting, like the neighbors would go and knock on the door. Yo, they're fighting again. <laughs> Me and my brother was mad. But I think he just got out of hand, probably, is, you know, not even realizing as young kids, loads of stuff going on around you that probably is making your head not straight. And it, I, I think it was more than that. I think it probably would have shocked, I think it probably shocked him more than me. Mm -hmm. Where, where did your, what's your mum and dad's background? Uh, so my dad, my mum and dad, they're, they're both British, white British. Um, my dad's side stems from like Irish and Scottish and my mum's side from like Romany gypsies. Um, but the Irish, we went, my, I, my, so I had them little influences from the Irish because my dad was an Irish folk singer. So when I was around him and, and I see that a lot and there was a lot of like, they used to do a lot of gigs and then people would come back to the house and party. So I, I grew up seeing that a lot. Uh, the Scottish was a little bit because my granddad was like Scottish. So, <clears throat> but he wasn't by blood. It was by marriage. Mm -hmm. So our, our, our roots went back to Irish, but there was always like um, a heavy influence from like Jamaica because them times there, I kind of found myself quite com more comfortable with my sister. And my sister was a lot older than me. She lived in London. She was, uh, she was dating a Jamaican guy at, at that time. They lived together. She lived in a predominantly black area. And I just really, I just liked, just liked it more. Just felt more comfortable in that area, in that, uh, and just everything around it just made me feel a little bit more comfortable. My name, Felt a little bit more comfortable. Having Afro hair didn't feel so so much out of place. Because I don't know if you remember back then, it, all, all like, all like in the kids in my school, all the white boys, they had curtains. And I couldn't get them because my hair was so curly. It would just twist up. <laughs> so I'll just give up in the end of curtains. But I felt, I felt that, yeah, I did feel more, like, a lot of comfort with my sister. And then obviously like her partner kind of looked up to him a lot as well. Because yeah. I was really like, just before then, I'd always, I never really took that influence from the Irish folk. I was always, always, always into like jungle music, drum and bass music with the, with the influence from dancehall music, listening to dancehall music and reggae. And that was kind of my thing. And my sister, she was like, she was heavily listening to that. So I kind of yeah. naturally just rather, I suppose it was because she was quite a lot older, maybe like not followed in my dad's footsteps, kind of like followed my mm. sister instead did you feel like an outsider no 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 at school and stuff for the curls uh, yeah 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 like, i did yeah place? yeah at, at the first school i did yeah, yeah. was yeah. that one of the lowest in your life when you seen your mum was 
abusing drugs, your brother stabbed you, your dad, the split up? No, because I just didn't work. I, wasn't, I wasn't at a point where I'd even realised what was going on. I kind of knew it was bad, but mm-hmm. I, don't, I, don't think that, I don't think that's affected me at all, really. Do you think that? But it always, we all think that because as men, <clears throat> we always try and block it out. We're very good at blocking it's, out it's pain. Definite, it's definitely affected me in a way which I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. But it, 100% would have affected me. 100%. But I don't know. It's, it's that, that I'm, that's how much of a man you block stuff out. You, you don't even know how it affects you. What did you do after school? I um, got kicked out of school. Why? Um, just, just, just through being a little shit, man. And um, I got a job. Started, it was like it was like a couple hundred quid a week, 15 years old, a couple hundred quid a week, didn't care, didn't care about anything really, just, yeah, just kind of, I always had music on my mind, so uh, even back then, even though like I wasn't like really, really taking it seriously, but um, I had a mad, it was a mad, like, up until like leave, getting kicked out of school, it was mad, but it was good, man. It was still good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't have changed anything. What age did you start getting into rap? Ah, oh, I must have been about nine, ten. Early? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who did you look up to? So uh, it was uh, like drum and bass at, the mo- at, that, at that time there. I had like an older friend. He was a few years older than me. Luke Ambrose. Big up Luke. Um, he, he, he was listening to like, had like, like Helter Skelter tape packs, stuff like that. And he used to bring them around and listen. And uh, I really took to the... Um, Bassman, Trigger, Spider, they was they was the drum and bass artists that had a heavy lead. Like they sounded, there was it was Jamaican. It was it was dance all over over jungle, and I just loved it, man. That that's that's what caught me straight away, and that's why I, I kind of went with that that style there from early. I remember it, he used to come around and we used to get the the tape packs and we used to play play the play the music on one tape deck and then you could record it on the other. And you could put headphones in the mic and you could like, and then so you could record yourself over the song. It was like a mini little studio, like back in the day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was good, man. Good times. Was music your escape? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, like so, so much. Yeah. It's my, it's my only thing that I've ever hold on to. That I'm like, yeah. Any, when things get bad, it's like, even when it's bad with music, it's like, I still got hope with that. That's my that's my my backbone. Why is it so important to you? Um, because it's all I it's just what I love, and that's all I know. Just music is music is like I won't cry. I will not cry. That nothing nothing will make me cry. Music ah catches me, man. Catches me so bad. Like I get really emotional with music. It's the only thing that can, that can really get to my heart and. And make me stop and think. My, I think I might have ADHD, but I don't know. I'm pretty sure I have. Because I don't, I can't ever keep still. Like I'm always, I've always got to be doing something. And when I work, I smoke a lot of weed. And that's what, focus. But if I, can't, I can't just smoke weed. I have to work. I have to smoke and work. So anytime I smoke, I have to be doing something as well. Um, and I just noticed just through like silly little things where like I, I notice myself like, like my missus I wind up like she falls asleep I will constantly like pick it out through the night yeah, yeah, poking her titch- and I realise because I've got nothing else there for my attention to so I, f- I feel like I have I don't know I've never been diagnosed or anything like that, but I feel like I feel like I've got ADHD to a certain extent so I feel like music keeps me like structured in a life of no structure because i ain't got no structure mm-hmm. and i ain't had structure for years like i don't have weekends like every day to, is another day for me so it's like yeah music's kind of like my structure i remember because i'm i remember when i left left my job and i and i said to myself i don't know how i'm gonna do this like, i don't know what even i'm doing now, nobody knew i was like really or anything and i used to just I didn't even have it. I didn't have no at the time. I didn't even have internet on my phone, and nothing. Like that. And I used to myself right every day. I'm gonna go to the library and spend one hour working, like it's a job, and that's what I've done. I just took it seriously like that. 
from then and just yeah yeah can you ever be alone yeah or do you always need someone there no yeah i can be alone what how's your headspace uh it can run wild <laughs> yeah it can run wild i can get really i don't know what it is with me sometimes man i just like even y yesterday just bad man just didn't want to get out of bed my my, my woman she kind of she kind of clocks it uh but it's difficult man because we're men and we don't i don't talk that much i do talk but sometimes i can't and it's like even yesterday sometimes i know it's all right but i don't know just that just catches me and i think sometimes i just need time i think i give a i think i give a lot of energy when i'm around people and when i'm when i'm like okay i'll give a lot of energy out and i feel like sometimes when i'm on my own i just need to just sometimes i'm good on my own sometimes yeah it gets a bit mad have you ever been suicidal nah nah i just sleep yeah i just want to sleep that's depression and just though. sleep and sleep yeah. and keep sleeping yeah do you take anything else other than weed no nah, no nah, i don't even drink that much yeah yeah is that why i see the character you've kind of built up over the last few years do you feel that's a shield because of who you are because even speaking to you now and away take away all the fucking other shit that you do you're a good guy man i can see you're a decent fucking guy yeah you know what i'm saying yeah but obviously when you build a character you've got to be that character you've got to be something else because it's not really you i remember when i started doing stand-up comedy <clears throat> i was going through a lot of changes in my life and i thought stand-up comedy i've always been funny i've always been funny at parties i've always been a clown but i remember doing it and going on stage and <clears throat> i remembered it wasn't me i was tired of being that clown you know and then i would come off stage and i would get depressed and i would get down and i think but it's not me because it's like a constant battle of trying to be two different people instead of just being me so this is a guy who i'd speak to now on yeah. podcast out a podcast if you speak to me after this i'll be the same guy there's not that tiresome way so i kind of went down that route but you've now created this character where gets you publicity gets you a bit of money gets you recognition and you're popping off but again it's not really you this is why these podcasts are so important because it strips back all that bullshit i think I, yeah man this is <laughs> i think it's the first podcast i've ever done like this um you're making me think <laughs> yeah, but that's a good thing i mean no i don't get tired of of being this person and i think it's different for me because i was always like this white boy that was just like heavily into jamaican culture and I loved it and I wanted to show it. And I think now I'm quite happy with it. Like obviously the fame is the fame and things come with the fame, but I'm definitely happy with, I feel like I, I'm now at my point in the life where I'm more comfortable with myself than I've ever been in my life. Because I was searching a long time for, well, not searching, but I was trying to be an authentic Jamaican dance or artist for years, years, ever since I've like listened to the music, I've done my music, but I've always wanted to be a, 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 an authentic to sound exactly the same. And I think it was only till like the beginning of the last year where I've started to find myself and understand that you're not gonna, you're white, you're British, you love the culture to the point where you can talk, you, you do the music, you know about the culture, and that's just you. And that's as far as it goes. You, you're you never gonna be an authentic dance or artist. You're gonna be a dance or artist. And that's all you need, because you create. I create something that's, that's different for me. Like I, I, I'm a dance or artist, but I'm not even like your normal dance or music, your regular dance, or some of it is, but. It's just different and I feel like I've created like the person who I was meant to be and I'm I'm comfortable with it. I'm comfortable with with it. I don't obviously like the whole thing of, you know, and I think a lot of people think to themselves, I wonder if him find it like hard for keep up the the, the, the the accent. But that is just normal 
And the only reason you never really hear it like this when we talk, when we talk to you, because you never really, me, me never to talk to, to a brother from Scotland or Ireland or England in, in, in a patois. That doesn't make sense. It, we just, it doesn't make no sense. If you are Jamaican, we can, we can talk to you in Jamaican and it's just no more natural. And if, 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 if me are talking away, when me not understand or can't say that word there, then I'll just say it in English. And I've built my vocabulary now. So like the words that I don't really catch in Jamaican, I always say in English. So it's like, it's just like natural now. It's like, it's just like, yeah, just that's when I say that and that's how I sound. And, and I'm happy with that. I'm happy with who I am. And, yeah, I don't, I don't feel like, I think the only persona that is quite difficult to keep up is being happy. Because I think I've given off this like positive, positive image of someone. And it ain't always like that. Like it ain't always like that. And it's really difficult to keep that up, man. Like it's really, really difficult. Yeah. Because even when you have bad times, it's like you feel like you don't even want to say nothing. Because the second you say something, you're letting all them people down that, that rely on you. They're relying on you. Like you're, the, you're their source of happiness in their, their time of like, ah, uh, like for instance, I, my car tire burst on the side of the road about a month ago. And I pulled over on the side of the road into a garage. And I walked off because the, the guy said he's going to be about an hour. So I said, all right, I'll go around and see what I'll go around the corner and see if there's any nice shops or whatever. So I went around and looked look what was around the corner and I come back and like the brother from the, the garage was, he was like taking the picture of the, the car, like to give me a ticket. I said, yo, what are you doing brother, man? I can't move, but this kid asked him to tie off flat. He said, oh, yeah, that's right. Ain't give, I said, big, big, big man, don't give me no ticket. Huh? He said, oh, no ticket, man. I said, all right, cool. I said, I'm going to move it, bro. He said, sorry. I said, sorry. I said, I'll move it out of the way. He said, true, so you're just in the way. I said, no problem. But I've got a flat tire. I'm trying to move it. And I, I moved. I've scraped the front of my car. Thinking, I've got out of the car and there's this young girl and she's like, she's just seen me and just burst out crying. And her mum's saying, like, oh, can she get a picture? Like, she loves you. And I said, yeah, cool. It's no problem. And I'm trying to comfort her and say, no, it's, it's cool. Like, you're all right. And at that moment there, I, as soon as her mum said after me what she said to me, I, I saw the whole bigger picture straight away. She said, she's having a really bad time at school today. Uh, not recently. I was seeing you, so she must have, like, I don't know, she's she's having a bad time at school, whether she's being bullied or she's having a bad time, or she, whatever she's going through. And there's this guy on the internet, big bomb book out, if I wasn't at me yet. And it's just, that so, it's so vibrant and happy it kind of even takes away from the rawness and what it's actually even saying. It's just kind of like a happy, like everyone's happy, she's happy. And I think that was her bit of happiness. I was her bit of happiness. And she seen me and like, burst out crying. And, I, and that's, that's my exact point. Like them people there, the second you start putting out to the public, like, ah, oh, look, I'm depressed. And I feel like I've let them down. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. But that's a big burden to keep on your shoulders because then what happens is you burn out. You end up depressed. You yeah. know what I mean? So you've got to protect your own energy and protect you because you're at that stage now when you're popping off, people are going to use you left, yeah. right and centre. This is a lonely journey to succeed to raise bath. I don't fuck around, man. It's a, I'm a lone wolf. Me and Steph yeah. on the road. We don't have fucking loads of people sitting here, big production. Yeah, we I've just got do a really work. close team as well. Yeah, because that makes it work. And, then you, and it's always hard to trust because there's an element of what they're trying to get everybody's got to eat we've always got to eat do you know what I'm saying yeah. so that is what it is but just keep fucking doing what you're doing as well don't listen to the outside noise because that is only noise yeah. um, how do you how are you so connected with Jamaica why did you connect with Jamaica um, I couldn't tell you the answer to that I don't know what it was um, but it wasn't just me you know my, my sisters and my, my brothers they're all, they're all the same as well maybe it's something in our DNA further down the line I, I don't know but I just love the place man because uh, I know because I, I loved it just as much before I even we even went there so it wasn't like I went there and then I loved it and it's like I'll oh, come back to Jamaica and I love Jamaica all of a sudden it was I studied it and loved it and way before I even went there 
the weed, bro. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a def- definitely a good part. Of it. I remember the first time I went there, actually, and I said to my bridge, because he he's Jamaican, I said, yo, mate, really? I said, no, I wonder, like, when we can get weed in Jamaica, he's laughing, so really, uh, just go on to Jamaica, man. Don't worry about weed. <laughs> mm-hmm. But no, that's not what it was about. That, 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 that weren't. I'd smoke, I smoked weed way before then anyway. Mm-hmm. That, that definitely weren't, no, like, but it's, it, it, it was, I do like that part. I'm not going to say I don't like that part of it. It's nice to smoke, but it's just like amps, uh, just like other places, you know, where you can, yeah, you're, able, you're able to smoke. I think it's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when did you start, like, with changing your kind of personality persona? Because you've obviously done rap videos and then you've became the way you speak, the way you yeah, dress, see, the way you it, walk. This is the, this is the, this is the thing. It, like, what you see over them like years ago it's, they weren't even it wasn't even me mm-hmm. it wasn't even me like before then i had like more i was it was more like the jamaican style music before then when i was doing drum and bass the way i was doing it but then it just it got watered down into my career and the, when i first started to like actually recording music it got watered down because of the people i was around because they was british and that's what they were doing they were doing grime Mm-hmm. so it just got watered down from whatever like and it wasn't until i moved away from the area in london that i i, I um i kind of like found myself i said all oh, right yeah, that's actual dancehall music and it like drip just started getting a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more as time went on yeah but it was like it was it's always been there and what do you see in that person when you become like proper reggae Jamaican and the way you speak the way you walk what is that feeling is that a happiness for you um yeah I suppose it is yeah, yeah are you more happier being what's the name for that person I love Jamaica what's it when name? I'm in Jamaica there's no other place where I feel just free like so comfortable like I think I, I, I don't know I don't know what it is I don't know what it is I just feel really comfortable there man I feel like nothing's too formal I feel like and even when it is formal like it is formal like obviously but I just feel I can be myself a little bit more I can be like the everything that I like and I enjoy is there and that's why I like England because we've got a close connection to Jamaica and places and like like when I leave here I go to my friends, my bridgings, and he's a Jamaican. And everyone we're around is Jamaican. And with the shops we go to is Jamaican. And we can get any type of Jamaican food. So I love UK. I do like the UK because it, it, it allows me to stay connected. But when I, set, when I set off that plane, oh, it's just like that energy that I'm in Jamaica because it's just like my friends are there and I know everything. And it's just like, yeah, I love it, man. I love it. I Why love would it you so never much. move there? I, I definitely, no, I definitely would. Because if you come back here, obviously you're sleeping more, a little bit of depression here and there. If it's not feeding your soul, man, then it's that's that's think, telling you your answers. Yeah, I think I think like spiritually, Jamaica's always been the place where I'll end up. Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely because I don't even feel like like less pressured in Jamaica. My stress goes. Like I don't worry about being on the internet so much. Um, the way I dress is quite loud. I've always been a loud person. If I'm buying a Ralph Lauren t-shirt, you better have Ralph Lauren all over it. I'm not gonna buy no Ralph Lauren. It ain't, if you ain't got it on it, I ain't buying it. Like I'm loud, I like to stand out and my favorite color is yellow. So like the whole thing about Jamaica, like the colours and the vibrancy and like the, the, the clothes and the, the, the music, like the nightlife is like you'll never find nowhere else. When you go into them parties in Kingston and you've got the vibe there and the man's walking around with the, you, you know, you just stand in there. You don't, you don't feel like everybody's there to get drunk. Like it's like you feel like everyone there's just to have a good time because you've got the weed man walking around. So it's like people are less likely to, at that moment when you finish that drink, you're less likely to go to the bar because it's like, oh, I finished my drink. 
Ah, the weed man, yo, yo, sir. Give me a hundred dollar bag and give me two rays like that. And you smoke it and you, you're still in your vibes. And uh, it, it, the vibe to it, man, like this, the, the selectors and people travel from all over the world to go to the parties. Like you, I, I, I drive around Kingston all day and I never see one tourist, not one person from a different country. You go to the parties at nights, you see white people, you see Chinese people, Italian people, because it's that vibe that you, you'll never catch anywhere else in the world. Um, they're so lovely people. Like, if you've never been to Jamaica and you know Jamaicans in the UK and Jamaicans in Jamaica, the thing is with Jam Jamaicans in the UK is England's a stressful place. So you become stressed with the system. Anybody who's in England, doesn't matter what race you come from, it's, just, it's a very stressful place. Jamaica, you can be any color, any any type of race, and it's just it's just free and just just be, be who you want to be, man. Like they, they, no one cares about like how you talk or how you can dance in the middle of the street on your own, dance in the middle. No one cares. Yes, and they're so lovely people. Like conversation wise, <laughs> you don't go anywhere here and have a conversation. You can go literally walk to the shop. And you find yourself like, oh, I've got to go home, man. Because you're just conversating. It's just, everyone's just cool. Everyone's just wants to have a conversation. And actually, because they've got a little bit more time. Time's not all about, it's not all about, ah, oh, we've got to get there, we've got to get this. Got to get there. Then, man, they're just chilling. Yes, I, you're good. Yeah, man, we are there. With, they are, man, we are. You know, so, man, I cook up some curry chicken today. And yeah, today. Yeah, I'm not, and it just, you just end up having normal, nice conversations. And they're really, really nice people. I'm thinking about moving to Jamaica. Honestly, now, bro. <laughs> I don't know. I know there's crime there, but there's crime everywhere. And I, I don't know how. Jamaica seems to be this dangerous, dangerous place. And I'm not saying it ain't dangerous. I'm just saying, man, they're such nice people. So welcoming and so nice. I don't think I like. But then a lot of countries are like that. Yeah, I've had a lot of boys on whose mums are Jamaican and every time I've went to theirs for dinner, their mums are amazing, the food's best. amazing, there's fucking, the but best. you just know not to fuck them either because they know they run the household. The nicest, toughest people in the yeah. world. They're the nicest, welcomest, most toughest people in the world. How were they when, you, when you've got the accent and that on? Do they treat that okay or do they think you're maybe taking so, the piss? No, nah, man, nobody's ever said that in my life. Let me say, oh, you sound like a Jamaican. You sound like a real Jamaican. Let me say, yeah, man, respect, man. All them say, oh, you have it, man. Them just say, you, you have it, man. You have it. And I say, yeah, man, respect. Or, yeah, they've never, they've never took an offence. They're tough people. They're tough people. You, if you're talking, you have to understand, right? Because when people say, oh, you know, I wonder if people get offended if you're if if talking a Jamaican accent. But you have to understand the way we're talking goes way past, like, we're not just talking in an accent. We're seeing someone say, yeah, my father, father, yeah, man, fully active, you know, we say everything govern. From time you talk, like, basically, I, I saying, like, when we say, yeah, man, Oh, well, I got my father, father, what's good, my bro? Like, everything good, everything govern. They're not, you're not taking a piss. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, of course. It's too... I'm just saying, there's some people out there who... 100%, yeah. 100%, but... Especially in the UK, which we'll yeah, touch 100%, on. Yeah, 100%, yeah, yeah. But it's like, the way you talk and the way you are, you, you can see, like I, like, I think if you was walking down the street with, with a hat on, with dreadlocks... You know, like the fake hats when you get the dreadlocks of yeah. Amazon and you're walking down and you say, yeah, man, wah, well, guan, wah, well, guan, yeah, man. And you're saying things out of time, they're going to be like, but to be honest, Jamaican people, you know, they're such nice people, they wouldn't even do it. They'd just be like, oh. mm -hmm. they can do anything. <laughs> they're just good people, bro, honestly. Like, But yeah, man, my, 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 um, it's too, uh, it's too natural anybody's ever be like oh, what's this guy doing coming one with Jamaicans mm -hmm. driving a Jamaican car 
just um, it's normal and the things that the culture what it is is I'm so entwined to it a lot of people don't even know that I'm not Jamaican a lot of time I don't even say that I'm not because it just doesn't make no sense of complicating things and just see I'm gonna say yeah man I got my G yeah man I'm yeah, man. Yeah, fully up my fam that is it we got keep it moving yeah uh, <laughs> What was your first viral video in the UK? Um, a song called 100 Gyal. Yeah, it was a little clip that went... Is that the one you were like fucking shouting into the mic and you... It went, oh, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. How was that button? You've got that clip. No, not from BBC One Extra. Not that one. But there was a clip of us. There was that many clips now. Right, you know, yeah, every yeah. time I'm with my... It's just fucking your face. Yeah. But it's good to see... This is, this is what you've wanted as yeah. well isn't it yeah yeah so what was it like when you went viral for the first time horrible man why <laughs> uh obviously like portrayed as a gimmick and as a joke yeah yeah and it was quite difficult to get my head around the disrespect and the laughing and uh, and all that and it sent me into depression again <laughs> yeah yeah which is a bit nasty but jamaica saved me again but it is strange for people like you say the white guy from England because if you if somebody meets you and you're speaking Jamaican you would think you're Jamaican yeah. you would think yeah no but then you speak English and you think fuck me right but so if you're that's never been really say, seen before no do you know what so I mean listen is, you be forty in that reggae I, I, music they get shit back in the day I've had you be, yeah man be yeah man and, and, and I, 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 I think that is why the reason why I'm always gonna get more fight than anybody else because there's never but never never really been anybody like me. Mm -hmm. I've never really been that person that 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 you know sit down and they talk like that. They, they there's not, and they won't. I, I, they, hopefully, there'll be a lot more. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it won't end there. So you've went viral then, and then it's kind of instead of celebrating that like you've had depression with it. Yeah, hip depression badly, man. Horrible. Stuck in my bed for two days, and then Jamaica to the rescue. When did you go there? Two days afterwards, three days. Was that the first time you'd ever went? No. No, no. I've been there a good few times before. Do you then. go there to recharge? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Mm. <laughs> 100%. So if all that shit gets you depressed, why do you do it? Because um, there's a lot of happiness as well. Yeah. But I don't think anything in life is just straightforward, man. I think anything in life is there's going to be ups and downs. I know stuff. I know people are going to draw me out. I know I'm going to probably be in the media for some stupid shit again somewhere down the line. But it's just what it is, man. It comes with the fame. It is what it is. Right now, I'm such a controversial person. You know, people blow in the UK. People blow in music. But blow from what I do, a white man doing reggae music to the level that I've blown, is it's a cause for controversy. Contra controversy but I'm 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 cool with that but whatever you're doing is working yeah it's fuck working fuck everybody else yeah 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 I'm with success comes pain man. comes misery comes torture yeah. that comes all the sad reality is it comes all with the job it's 100%. who who've got the thicker skin who then keep raising up and yeah. every time you keep raising up people then accept you yeah and acceptance is a massive thing and like, anyway walk like, of and life. This, this is the good this is why I love Jamaica so much because anytime I feel like Because this is who I am. I've never been no different. I didn't wake up one day and say, oh, I want to be like that. I've never done that. This is who I am. I can't change who I am, you know? So anytime I feel like people are trying to take my culture away, like talking so much shit about me, I feel like I can't be who actually who I am. Like, this is who I am. And that's why I just go back to Jamaica, just settles me again man being around the people them and the, the the love and the respect in jamaica and i just love it, it just makes me feel good because that's what happened when i first went viral I, I went to jamaica three days later and I'm, i weren't really a known artist or nothing then well apart from who i was just starting to be but i went on a show um tvj big tv channel and they do like a thing where free artists perform one minute each and a public vote for the winner and I won 
the Jamaican people voted me to win. So that was like a really good feeling. And that's when I come back to the UK and kind of like, okay, a bit more confidence of like me doing what I'm doing. Just kind of felt like Jamaica was with me. Yeah. They're celebrating you. Always go where you're celebrated. Always go where you feel alive. Always go where your happiness. You owe not, nobody nothing here. That's yeah. the thing. It's always scary making change and saying that you love the UK and it's this and that. <clears throat> it's ruthless here. Even look at when the England team are playing football, they can win. It's still all negative press that they get. Yeah, it's fucked up here. It's it's a sickly. I think the I think the ne I think the next step is to find a piece of land. And what I want to do is I want to set up some businesses there. So like, family friends have all got like businesses running. Um, because I think that'll be nice to actually like have my family friends winning with me because. It's like I've kept everybody quite close that was around me anyway. So the same people that was in Jamaica with me, rolling with me for years, he's, the, mm -hmm. he's my manager now. Why do you think you're celebrated more in Jamaica? The place, if anybody was going to raise alarm or raise question marks about who you were and what you're doing, would be Jamaicans. But if they accept you, if they love you, if they embrace you, if they, they want you to succeed and win, why do you think they can't do it here? Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I can't talk for every Jamaican. I'm, not, I'm sure not every Jamaican accepts me, but on the uh, stereotypically, I've got a good support and I just I think they understand me more. I think I understand them more and I think they understand me. How do you deal with it now? Obviously, you're getting bigger names popping, clips are, now you're getting clips when you're rapping as a kid and everything's out there in the open. Like, yeah. How was that? Are you handling it better or do you just do the same again, go to Jamaica, recharge and then come back? And... Yeah, just, um, no, things get to you sometimes and sometimes they don't, but I have, I have grew a very, very thick skin to it. Yeah, because it's been a lot in the past five years, leading up to like really blowing with Turn Red. I've been viable so many times, it's crazy. So I was kind of prepared for it. Yeah. When have you been at your lowest the last five years? Um, I'd probably say then. Yeah, I'd say then. Five years ago? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say that. Yeah. Because that was horrible, man. I was thinking, raw, oh, like, people are taking the piss out of me for, like, talking to me, like, but. I can't change. What am I going to change? How can I change? I don't know. I don't know nothing else. <laughs> what am I going to do? He's just like, yeah, it was really. The thing about the UK as well, though, we do like a laugh. Yeah. Like, yeah. like if you see somebody saying, look, man's had a bit of reggae, reggae sauce and then went full Jamaica. Like, ah, you, yeah. You they kinda, that doesn't. That... Like, I kind of, I laugh. I go, that was not bad. Like, but when it comes to the, the hard stuff, when it comes to the, the bullying and the, does it bring back a lot of emotions? from what you went at school as well? No. No. I wouldn't say that. I got a thick skin, man. But then you're loved as well. Yeah. People love your stuff. I don't think, I don't think, I think it'd be unfair to like, get like, upset from like, people chatting shit when you get so much love. Hmm. Like, I think, I think that's the way I see it. I think that I just get so much love. I think you'd be unappreciated if you start hmm. moaning about it. Who says this and that? Come on, man. When was the moment you realised, okay, this is who I am, this is what I want to do, and I'm just going to give it 100%? Fucking always. Ever since I was... Knee high. Music. Music. Get famous. Signed. That was it. It never changed. It's never changed. Whatever. Some years I was working more, taking more. It's never changed. Never changed. It's always been the same goal. Is that why you've never quit? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because it's not as if you're early 20s, late 20s, you're late no. 30s. Yeah, I ain't got nothing else. I ain't got nothing else, man. Literally, I ain't got nothing else. Not that I know of anyway, because I don't know nothing else. But yeah, music, that's, that's just me. How did Turn Red come about? Because that's been your main one. That's been the one that's kind of broke you through. Yeah. Um, big up Turn Red 
<laughs> it, uh, I was in Jamaica. I done a freestyle. That part of the freestyle, where I said, big bomber class, before I boss in my head, just went viral, went viral in Jamaica. Started going viral everywhere. And uh, yeah, just decided to record it as a song, put it out there, and just went crazy, man. Like crazy. Yeah, mental. I never, and it was just like, it was just like a whirlwind. It was just like, what, stopping? Every time I phoned the producer, I was there, boy, I said, it ain't stopping you, brother. <laughs> he said, no, nah, man, make it go on, man. But yeah, that, it definitely helped me. Uh, it definitely helped me feel a bit of accomplishment. Finally. Even though I'm still not, like, I'm still like, I'm still in the race now. Like, I'm still like, oh, what's next? What's, I've got to do this, I've got this. I definitely feel a little bit accomplished. 40 years. Yeah. Yeah, because I've got a book and I every year I get a new book and I write my lyrics and my plans and whatever in this book. And it got up to Christmas and the song had been signed. Kai Sanat had just posted it. All the top influences in the world were posting it. Andrew Tate was conversating about me. Everything was just going. And at that point there, I was number one in the iTunes and reggae charts. I was number eight in the TikTok charts. I just said, I made it. I just read, I made it and closed the book. And I thought I'll open up another book because now it's a new chapter. This chapter finished here. It's finished here. Now it's a new chapter. This is just the beginning. So that's why when you're saying about our age, yeah, definitely it's the second part. This is just the beginning, just the beginning. A little bit of money in my pocket so I can actually do the things that I needed to do to get myself where I needed to be. So I feel like this is just the start, man. Uh -huh. Yeah. So it was a good feeling. Of, was that the first time you'd felt as if you'd accomplished something? Oh, man. All that years of people laughing and people oh, talking shit. Oh, my God. It was so emotional. I think... It was all happening and it was all happening, but I think it was when I signed the deal. That's when it... When did you sign the deal? Um, about three weeks before Christmas. And what's the deal? It was with Sony. For the, for, just for the song. Yeah. That's class, I don't know. So even though, it, <laughs> even though I'm not signed to Sony like that, but I got the song got signed to Sony and... <clears throat> what are you thinking when Sony calls? Um, no, I, expect, I was expecting it. I'm not gonna lie and say I weren't expecting it. I was expecting it. Um, I had a few other labels interested in as well, but it was a little, it was a rough little journey. Even going through the the signing, you know, producers, distributors, and and uh, it was really, really stressful time because it was a couple of weeks where. I was waiting to sign, but it was all on other people. It was distributor, distributors had to terminate contracts early. People's other producers had to get their lawyers involved and whatnot and whatnot. And it was like literally like a two weeks of like my whole family, just like my little mum, my kids, the missus, and they're all like, like my son. You can know he's feeling it for me like he don't even want to chat to me because he knows like my mind's just like so and so tense and then yeah when I finally decided to deal my whole body just and I just couldn't hold it together man went into my mum just said and my missus my missus was there my mum was there and I said oh, I signed it I've done it I said I, said, I think I said I've done it and just broke down man broke down ah yeah it's a mad time it was a it was so emotional finally i still feel i feel like i'm in a race again now i feel like i'm back to square one that's what you want to feel though because then that means you don't get too above your station yeah, I suppose. So. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bro? I suppose so. So it's good to stay humble. It's good to yeah. say, okay, it's just the beginning. Because it doesn't mean anything. <clears throat> It'll fizzle. 
Mm. And then what? We've got to go again. How big can we go, go next go time? Again. How much money can we get in the next contract? Like, this yeah. is all business, bro. How's your mum now? <clears throat> She's really good, man. Yeah. She must be proud of you then. 100%. Yeah. Uh, that That's one thing that's nice about the whole thing, the family being proud. But then it's just a pressure. Because it's like now, dad's this new person. Dad's buying us trainers on the weekends. Dad's buying this. And I was, I'm, 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 right, I'm tight with money. <laughs> I am tight with money. Because I never knew when the next money was coming. I didn't get paid a wage. I didn't, I didn't know what was coming next week. It was just music, you know? And, and you get to a point where like the kids are happy and I'm like, now I feel like I can't let them down. Cause now I've got to be dad still. I've got to be this dad now. With the chains and the, I've got to be him now. Mm -hmm. how, old, what, how many kids you got? Five. <laughs> <laughs> Five kids bro, how age? Uh, 14, nine, <clears throat> two that are eight, and one who's seven. Yeah, that's just what it's all about man. Well he's seven soon, he's six. How do they see their dad when they see you being the artist and rap and reggae yeah, and proud really proud like even my 14 year old she's like she was like the only one who like nah but now it's like she gets treated different in school now like she went through she like she went through a little bit of bullying because she was uh in like this emo stage of her life where she wanted to be an emo which was fine I do it. You, me, I don't judge nobody. <laughs> Anyone can be whoever you want around me, huh? you know? But so she done her thing and she got a little bit of stick for it at school and it was getting a bit like. And uh, I don't know what changed in her. Maybe she, maybe she, maybe she felt pressured to change into it. So I do tell her, like, I hope you're not pressured into that changing because you be who you want to be. But she's kind of changed, she's kind of rebranded herself now like not emo what is emo like uh you know like gothic yeah yeah so now she's not that now she's the opposite now she wants jordan fours and this and that and it's like she's at, she's at school now and obviously like your dad's m dot r in it he's got a song with snoop dog like, it's like so it's 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 nice in that way but um yeah, it's a pressure, man, because I've got a, that's the biggest pressure out of everything. Yeah, kids are the because we're biggest pressure is that I don't care about anything else really. Protectors. I don't care about money that much, man. I don't, but I care about my kids' happiness. Yeah. Yeah. Do you see a lot of yourself and your daughter? Yeah. And my son. Yeah. Yeah, them two specifically. But kids are little experiment hunters, so they're trying to figure out what's right for them. Because at school, it's so much pressure to be the cool kid. Do you know what I mean? So it's difficult. So when you create a little character like yourself, it's like, okay, this works for me. <clears throat> and for anybody listening or watching, it's just be who you want to be as long as you're not 100%. harming anybody. 100%. Nobody's asked. That's yeah, why I don't yeah, judge yeah. people who sit across from me. I don't give a fuck who you are. I don't care if you're straight, yeah. bi, trans, gay, whatever, a goth, whatever the fuck, Jamaican, fucking, I don't, I genuinely, it in my heart, you, I though, do not yeah. care. As long as you're not harming kids, as long as you're not harming anybody 100%. else, be who you want to yeah. be. And yeah. I think people, because for me, you know, the universe, this is a big game. I think we're all just big characters and we can dress the way we want, we can speak the way 100%. we want, we can, but it's just, if you're not harming anybody, then what are you doing wrong? Why are you people so that. triggered by so, so things that are so yeah. sensitive? Yeah. Stop being so sensitive to things that aren't really that big. So it's just be your own character, be yeah. your own fucking whatever it is you want to be in this life. And we're living in a very judgmental society where social media is playing a massive part in mental health. And then on top of that, you've got drink, you've got drugs, you've got people trying to out compete each other with money and success. Yeah. And <clears throat> we are confused. We are confused because there's people who can have a great life and a great upbringing with their kids and being a good dad by just going out there and working and coming home and yeah. spending time with your kids because yeah, yeah. So that's where pressure. the real happiness is yeah but it's difficult because we all want to succeed social media is a numbers game we all want yeah. more followers we want more views okay i didn't get more views for that am i not loved anymore so you, you doubt yourself yeah and that's the tricky part because then you're never enjoying the process because life goes that fast like you say it's half time for me and you you're fucking 40s yeah. 
And it does matter, man, especially in this music game, because that's, the, that's, the, that's what the labels are looking at. Mm -hmm. They're looking at the numbers, you know? So if you're not getting the numbers. Yeah. But for me, I just think that I'm content in life as long as I, like, I'll be happy with this. I'll be happy carrying on like this. How'd Snoop Dogg come about? Uh, so it was a feature from a guy from New York. Already had the song. Asked me to do a feature. And um, yeah, just paid me to do a feature. It's amazing though, isn't it? Crazy. It's fucking amazing. Crazy. You've you've not quit. You've always believed in yourself while yeah. people are laughing and yeah. poking and prodding and kind of bullying and they don't see you when you're in the house crying and fucking miserable and depressed and thinking, what am I doing? Like you've kept going and that yeah. goes for anybody. Just keep going. I don't think people realise like the effect that they have on people. Like when you're when you you're like like I don't, I'm not going into it, but I had a situation on the weekend where I'd done a podcast and they set me up and they, they put out a clip. It, it might not have been intentionally to, to throw me under the bus. It might not have been. And it probably wasn't. It probably genuinely just was to get attention, to get For views. traffic yeah. to the channel. And I, but I don't think you understand like, they thought I said something, and when you watch it, I don't. <laughs> like, clearly don't. But they don't have understanding. I think these people here are thinking, that's fine, because it doesn't say that, or whatever you're putting out is not actually what it is, but people run with that one post that they've seen, and it gets to you, man, because people would, you know, it's a lot. So I don't, I think people should, like, this 2024, this whole cancel culture thing is crazy crazy like it's it's i think there's just like a lot of people that are not doing a lot with themselves that are really bitter and will invest every piece of time to drag you down you don't know these people it's really dangerous you don't know these people you don't even know them personally but they want to drag you down Council culture in 2024 is gone, it's getting out of control. Yeah, for me, I think the only person that cancels you is yourself. Same 100%. As myself. Nobody can't Nobody cancel you apart from yourself. Me. Yeah. When you've got a soul, when you've got free thinking mentality, what can they take your social media? Who fucking cares? Life goes 100%, on. 100%. Doing me a and fucking if you're favor. doing stuff you shouldn't be doing, yeah. then you know that's on your conscience. Yeah. So you and know you know I mean? that that's going to come out, bro. So you can, you, you, you know, somewhere down the line, ah, oh, yeah, everything's going to fuck up for you because you're not a good person but sometimes you're a good person and you ain't like you say you ain't doing nothing wrong nah yeah. you're good man how was it in the UK then obviously in Jamaica it's different but the UK what about like racism and putting on voices because if I was to put on an Indian voice or a Pakistani voice people were saying oh racist this and that mm. so how does it work here how are you how does people treat you with putting on a Jamaican accent in the UK well I, I only talk to Jamaicans in Jamaica I only yeah man so it's if, if, like I say, if my, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, unless, unless it's relevant. Because mm -hmm. you know what people are like here? Yeah? They just want to pick and prod and find faults and flaws on 100%. everything. 100%. 100%. Yeah. How's it been now? Obviously, as things change for a positive after Turn Red, but people are starting to support you. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the first time you'd felt proper love? I felt like a lot of people got one over then yeah i feel like that was like yeah turning the, point where like yeah yeah this guy okay he's a serious artist actually i got a good yeah. tune it's quite catchy everybody's yeah. singing it exactly Do you that, know what yeah. i mean is that what you felt okay yeah. i'm not a joke i'm not just some guy who's a mimic yeah like someone who's pretending and trying to make fun of people right. because at the start if you see someone at the start you've never seen before people have got the right mind to go He's a joke because there's a lot of comedians 100%. out there who do a lot of shit, and you yeah, and that, you think that, that is that's act. the thing because we're yeah we're in a we're in a we're in a day and age of there is a lot of like content creators, mm -hmm. so I hundred percent I I don't blame anybody from from looking at it and saying right he's he's a content creator putting on a Jamaican accent, yeah yeah it's far from that. So how are you feeling with it all? But how do you where's the next steps from you? Where do you go? How far can you take it? Uh, I don't, I'm going to be, the, I, I, I even want to sound ignorant. I will be the biggest thing there is. Yeah. People will remember me, mate. 
this is just the beginning. This is literally just the beginning. Literally. What is going to happen this year? <sighs> Who knows? Who knows? But I, I'm, 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 I want to be like a legend. Remember him. He went through it, man. He went through it like, he's, oh, yeah. Strongest soldiers always get the hardest fight. Because you'd be 40, were they are reggae, aren't they? I've had you be 40 on because they get shit. Because they were yeah. doing reggae music. Yeah. <clears throat> because they've not obviously got that. I can imagine. I mean, I love you be 40. I love that. I was buzzing to have them on. So people can be who you want as music, yeah. as an artist. Do you know what I mean? Whether you buy it or not, there's all the same as Eminem, greatest yeah. rapper of all time, the biggest rapper of all time. Yeah. People fucking hated on him because he's a white guy. Right, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just be, like I say, if you're pushing the boundaries and pushing the boat, as long as you're not harming anybody, if people are no. not getting affected, then that's what I'm saying. Who, yeah, who, man, who the it, fuck you harming? You know, this is, this is genuine, genuinely my life, you know. I don't, I don't, um, nothing's like, nothing's like uh, set out to make it look like I'm more into the culture or anything like that. Like, the food I cook for dinner every day, nobody sees. What do you cook? Because you've got a cooking channel as well. I've got a cooking channel as well, yeah. Cook and Vibe. Check out the cooking channel. Um, turned into a bit of a vlog channel at the moment, but we still do the cooking. But I cook Jamaican food, bro, every day. What's your speciality? Um, for the kids would say curry. The kids would say curry goat. That's what the kids would say. But for me, mine's like escovitch, fried fish. But it's it's like, it's a normal, it's a very, very normal lifestyle for me. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, Jamaican food is my, is my, uh, growing up, my mum never used to really cook a lot. So we never really like grew up like knowing how to cook like that. So my first introduction was food was from my sister's partner. It was, it was a rasta so it, my, my whole my whole thing has been like jamaican food because i don't i don't really know like i know exactly what to do like my head don't work like all right we're cooking lasagna tonight okay because i don't know how to make lasagna i've never cooked lasagna I, I wouldn't even know where to try it. i don't know where to start what to do but it's like so like when we're shopping it's like automatically like right Oh, uh, we 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 do an ox towel for that day. Uh, brown stew chicken that day. Uh, we do we have fish that day. Or uh, this that day. I can sort fish in that in that morning there, and just sat out and yeah. And I, I I'm a I'm a savory sort of person, so I find Jamaican food just I love Indian food and Jamaican food. Like it's that the whole savoriness works for me. It's so strange. The, the Jamaica for me is so strange. Like everything is like. For me, in the mornings, I find it quite difficult to eat cereal. Um, my dad used to force feed me oats, <laughs> like the Scottish oats. Porridge. Ah, hated it. Um, <laughs> just all the kind of like, I'm not, I'm not really a breakfast type of person. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when I started, you know, like eating a lot more Jamaican food, like the Jamaican patties, for me, it was like, yeah that works for my stomach in the morning, the same way like a, a, a steak bake or, or a sausage roll or whatever kind of works good for me. Um, so if, it, if it's a sausage roll or a steak bake or a Jamaican patty, it all works for me really well. So if I'm in Jamaica, I know it's how. Or it's like a soup in the morning, like a chicken soup, like just, just works better for me. The, what I like, it just works better for me. The drinks that I like, is um like I don't like uh I don't I don't I don't I don't like whiskey you know like Hennessy but I like rum because <laughs> I like rum that blows the ass right off you know it's about fucking hundred and fifty percent I remember doing <laughs> one of the street because I was supposed to go what's the the can the Notting Hill Carnival but I was supposed to go to wasn't Jamaica it was somewhere like that though Trinidad uh, Trinidad my friends from Trinidad Leo and uh. And he was wanting us to go, but I couldn't make it for some reason. But they were saying that the drums like hundred percent. Yeah, they fucking love it. Yeah, and the food and the everything. Like, I get the vibe, man. Listen, I get it. And yeah, it's all about what makes you feel happy. Yeah, and I think I think it's just it's just a place where, like, yes, look, I like that. 
food more than like it's not like I'm not I'm not saying like I only like Jamaican food. I'm saying I prefer it. I'm not saying I don't like any other drink, but I put everything in the culture connects with me. I'm a I, I like like fruit punch. Like when you go into a shop, I find it better to buy a drink in Jamaica than in a shop in England. Because of just the flavours and the range is more for me. It connects with me more. Uh, like even like the drinks, like the alcoholic drinks, Magnum. I, that's what I drink, Magnum. So when you wake up in the morning, look, who are you when you wake up? Are you just, that's are you Moses? Or do you feel like the Jamaican buzz? And who, who are, who do you, do you wake up? Is it different every morning or are you just? No, nah, man, we wake up morning. I wake up every morning. Reggae music has to play. Reggae music has to play. That's like, that's like my, yeah, don't, don't I need to smoke, a bit of reggae music. Um, I think people would be shocked if they actually see how I live each and every day. Like my house is like, there's Jamaican flags everywhere. <laughs> there's no other seasoning in there apart from Jamaican seasoning. Like there's other seasonings, but they don't get used as much as that one. This is what I'm trying to say. I'm try My point is, like, I'm not just specifically saying this country. Like, you can go in my cupboard and there's Mexican spices and Italian spices, but there's Jamaican spices more than anything, and they're getting used more than anything. You know, um, when it comes to music, I like grime music. I like a bit of this and a bit of that, a bit of this, but it's constant reggae and dancehall music. How about Bob Marley? Yeah, man. You're doing a film about him next this year, maybe yeah, that, I think. That's, that's, that's gonna really be epic, man. Yeah. Yeah. But I just I I do I think people would be really shocked if they understand like this ain't like it's not like I get up and like oh, like I say, it's never been I've got to get up and oh, I've got to do this to try and make it look like um mm -hmm. like the like the stuff that I do away from camera. Is probably like people think like, oh. <laughs> like yeah, he's he he really does enjoy it, and that's 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 what he, that's what that's what he does. Do you feel as if you always tried to like get people to understand you more that you're not? It's not an act. It's not a charade. It's not kind of you're no, abusing no. somebody's culture. Or... No, I don't care, man. <clears throat> I don't care. Yeah, I think it's... you've came too long now, bro. Yeah, 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 yeah. If 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 you if if you look into it enough, you, if you don't, you don't. Yeah, you know, that's all you can do. Like you, 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 you get to a point of it where it's like, I'm not saying that I, 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 I deserve any sort of status or anything like that. But it's just a simple thing where it's like, if you ask me questions, I will have the answers. Like if you ask me about Jamaica, I will have the answers, and I will know. And you, you're gonna find it very, very difficult to catch me out. To find out if I don't know anything or or that's or you know, mm -hmm. um, would you say you're more Jamaican than English? Obviously, people can identify as fucking pandas and horses now. Like, <laughs> do you identify as a Jamaican? No, no. Nah. Like, are you just all like, half English, but you just love everything about Jamaica? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just a, I'm just an English cultured person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because you know, you know you'll get you get yeah because it, it, it's not just it's not just Jamaica that um that I love you know I love all other countries and I'm a I'm a really uh I'm a really cultured person mm -hmm. yeah in every culture yeah like if, if I'm in Turkey I want to know what they're eating I want to everything I want to want to know the culture. Mm -hmm. so yeah man i'm just a, i'm I, I just class myself as because this is where it all went crazy the other day i'll just call, i'm just an english cultured cultured man who loves jamaica that's not a bad thing bro but like i say we're no. living in an environment where people are identifying as fucking bits of wooden flooring carpets and so people will question i want to get myself in trouble because the, the, the things that you, you say things these days and gets taken way out of context. So I'm going to be really careful how I say this. That whole thing of identifying as something that you're not is mental. It's crazy. 
Be who you want to be. And if you feel comfortable in that person, run with it. You don't have to identify. I don't have to. I'm not Jamaican. I'm never going to say, oh, I'm a Jamaican or I, I identify as a Jamaican. I'd love to have a Jamaican passport. Don't get me wrong. I would definitely love one of them so I could, you know, like, just uh, like, you know, get a place and say, I'd, I'd love that, man. I'd, but that's just for me. Just I'd just love for them to give it to me. I thought, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> you know, but. I fucking uh, love it, mate, that you've got so much passion for yeah, another country. You embrace yeah, it. I love fucking it, man. Um, Jamaican love it, man. flags because people, listen, like I say, I'm fucking rooting for you, bro. Be who you want to be. Do the fuck you want. Fuck yeah. what anybody says. Who gives a fuck if you want to do I've it? I've got fake like... mango cheese and fake banana cheese in my in my living room yeah. to make me feel like you know, a bit more tropical. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, when you right. can back over? Uh, soon, man. Soon, yeah. I, I need to get back soon. Yeah, good on oh. you. Fucking go for it, bro. Like I say, there's but no... Yeah, look. I don't... I, I don't... Um, the whole identifying thing, I think people should really feel a little bit, just be more, just be comfortable with what you want to be. You don't have to say you identify someone for someone to take you as someone. I don't need to say, ah, oh, ah, oh, you know, you want to be something. So people will see it. They will see it and they will embrace you from it. You know, if you want to be, if you, if you want to be a biker, you be a biker. You don't have to prove anything to them. When you just be it and you just do it, and the more you do it, people will notice. But oh look, oh, he's a biker, and that's it. You know, so uh, yeah, man. People just just, just be who you want to be in life, man. Why do you think it triggers people? I don't know. People just, being different. I don't know, man. I do you think know. that's because they've not got the balls to be who they want to be? Maybe, maybe, maybe. But uh, if, if if no one ain't gonna say it, I'll stand up and say it first. Listen, I am. A Jam uh, I'm <laughs> I am a Jamaican. I love Jamaica to 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 the point where there's never going to be anything that ever changes. That it, it will never change. This isn't this isn't something that I'm doing for now. Jamaican culture is 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 like is is is, is what it will always be for me. It will it, it's always been and it will always be. So I don't have to say I uh, like. Even to say I'm an I'm a authentic dance or artist, I am happy with who I am. I'm happy with I'm a white British cultured guy who does reggae music, and that's it. There's no more to it. And 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 people in Jamaica, they don't care if I'm white or if I'm British or if I'm German or whatever. He's, he, he does what he does. Could you ever go to another place, fall in love with that, and then, like, say you went to Germany or Japan and you thought, okay, I love this culture, and then for you no, know No, because the love for Jamaica is so, so strong. deep. It's, it's, uh, that's what I'm searching for in them countries. Do you think it's a lot more than what people understand? Yeah. Like, I'm in Switzerland, and I'm sitting in, out of anywhere I could be in Switzerland, I'm sitting in a studio with some white rasters, drinking rum, smoking weed, because... I felt comfortable with them. We had a good vibes and we can just have a good, you know? Yeah. For anybody watching, brother, that's maybe in a life or struggle, you've battled yourself, you've come out the other end, you're flying high in life, you're achieving everything you set out to do. I know you still battle, but for anybody that's struggling right now, what advice would you have for them? Um, <sighs> be you. Don't care what people say. And and just stay strong, man. Stay strong. Keep your keep your mind strong, because they're out here to get you. What's all your social media? What's your YouTube channels? Get everything promoted where people can support, follow. Yeah, um, got a, my cooking channel. Please go and check it out. My YouTube channel, Cook and Vibe. That's when you really get to know, like, right, this guy isn't just doing music. Like he's, it's everything. Um, and then. It's so, it, you know what's horrible? And I have to say this, man. It's like I'm watching what I say in these, because of what happened on the weekend. Don't let these people out here destroy you. Because they will. 
they will. And they don't, and uh, don't let people destroy you. Don't let them, don't let them, because they will, they want to. And the second that I'm sitting here thinking, oh, be careful what you say, Emdo. I'm not, I've got nothing bad to say, bro. I've got nothing bad to say. I go on every podcast because I know I've got no, I can't say nothing wrong. What am I going to say this wrong? I don't say nothing wrong. But nah, there's people out there to get you. Be careful, be strong, and don't let them get to you. Because just saying that, just saying that has just made me overcome that. Just me realizing that I, a couple of times I'm like, well, nah, man, don't let them get to you. How are you feeling today? Like I say, it's good to have you on and strip back everything to show people who you are. Yeah, I feel like, I feel, I feel like, I feel, I feel like I've had a therapy session. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is what these about, bro. Like I say, majority of people, in fact, probably everyone just they try and show who they are and not, yeah. it, but it's to get an understanding of the person. You're not a bad guy. What you're doing, you've got you're a father, you're a husband, you're yeah. a son, a brother. Like people don't see all that, people are just seeing who you are online. But that again is it's not a character, but it's it's not real. When you strip all that back, nobody sees you when you're a dad. Nobody sees the trauma you've been through as a kid, stab for your brother. Go, I mean, this guy's actually okay. He loves Jamaica, but who fucking cares? Yeah. But you're getting a lot of love. Like I said, there's more love than, than anything yeah. else. Yeah. No matter who you are in life, no matter if you're good or bad, people are going to show love and people are going to hate anyway. So the bottom line is, is be you. Do what you want to do. Don't hurt anybody along the way right. and take your fucking journey as far as you want to go. Yeah. Everything is limitless. Yeah. You know what I mean, brother? Yeah, definitely. What's your social, what's your Instagram and stuff as well? Instagram, M.R. Official and um, TikTok, M.R. Official. What does M.R. mean? Is that your name? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just short that up, just in case it was yeah. anything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nothing interesting. Just, yeah, just, just in case I asked, in case it was, brother. Yeah. But yeah, listen, Moses, would you like to finish up on anything else, brother? Uh, no, just thanks Thanks for having me. Um, I'm a big fan of the show. I kind of knew that what, that what this conversation was going to be. Uh, and I and I do for now. I just want to say that I will I won't be doing any more podcasts or or interviews for the time being, just because I feel like I feel like I've explained my story. Now I've I've said it now. Like you, are, I've said it now. You, you you know I've told my story enough times now, and now I think it's time to just yeah you know. And I think this being a fan of the show. I think this is the perfect way to say like, okay. Yeah, listen, brother. From now on, just. Yeah, I wish you nothing but the success, Thank man. You, man. You, you keep it, smashing it, keep doing what you're doing. And I'll always be watching from the sidelines and cheering you on as well, brother. Appreciate God it, bless you, bro. Thank you.